my first um, I would ask uh, if you can tell me a little bit about if you go back in the past the time you started the, uh, this uh, Cafe Canan that um, if you can remember and say in your own words how did you start this whole thing why Cornelius Eddy means among all these people means this whole thing we can storytelling kind of mm -hmm. well I think um one thing that's very interesting about Kavikana is that it really began as a community. I mean, um, I had tried to uh, get a retreat going, trying to get funding from a university and um, a couple universities actually, and it didn't work out. But uh, I had met Cornelius at a writer's um, retreat where we were both teaching and we were the only African Americans teaching and we got a chance to talk a lot about being the only all the time and we uh, we formed a very close friendship and his wife um, and we decided to go on a vacation together and when we went on the vacation together I had recently gotten news that the funding that I had tried to get to do a retreat on my own hadn't panned out. And so I asked um, him and his wife if they were interested in um, doing a workshop. Or I, I, I don't even know if it was a workshop. I don't know how, how we framed that, but we were, we were deciding to have a place for African American people to meet and not be, feel isolated and alone but be with a group of African-American poets. We'd never seen anything like that happen. We had never taught African-American poets. I mean, rarely. No? No, because when you're in the university, there are no African-American poets. So you're, you're just rarely teaching African-American poets. You're not with other African-American poets. Which you're in until 1996? Yes. Oh, absolutely. No, when no, I was in, uh, at NYU, I graduated in 1985, and I was the only African-American at New York University in the graduate wow. uh, English department. Yeah. So from that point, it's changed a lot right now, right? Because uh, I don't know if I'd say a lot. Mm -hmm. Somewhat. But you have African-American studies and uh, many professors and Well, teaching. I'm talking about the English department. You know, oh. there's a... There's a divide between mm -hmm. African American studies and the English department. Even though in African American studies they study literature, it's that same divide you see. In MFA also, right? Yes. But you see that it's, uh, you know, there's a hierarchy. Yeah, exactly. The English department is oh. on top, yeah. and the African American studies is yeah. oh. underneath. And we talked about why this is earlier all over the world, right? But mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is the racial divide. <laughs> and so that made you start this whole thing in 1996? Yes, th we decided that, uh, the first thing that we, we decided we wanted to do it, but also we realized we didn't have any money and we'd have to do it out of our own pockets. Mm -hmm. And that's very important because in that way you have control. I mean, you, you're you sort of going out on faith because certainly we didn't have a lot of money. but. It, things fell in place. I made a phone call to a priest who's a dear friend of mine who was a retreat director at a large monastery on the, on the Hudson River and he said, you know, bring everybody here next summer. Yeah. So we started just, things just started falling in place. We put one little ad in a paper and we got 60 applications for 20 spaces. Now we get 100 and well, we got 233, we got 233 this, year. this year for for 20 spaces for 20 spaces yeah so it's it, it just felt i mean it's really been hard work you know our director allison and the director before it's an incredibly but but people are committed to doing this they mm -hmm. want to do it and that makes a huge difference the, the the need is there and the passion to get this done Makes um, in an almost organic way or an intuitive way, you and Cornelius set up some of the um, community yeah. building, yeah. Um, you know, structures or environment yeah. that are, yeah. you know, they're really kind of a pedagogical model, yes. and they work to this day. 
but they were really represent a departure from the traditional hierarchical or competitive model. Yes. And that started at inception in ninety six. You know, it, I remember um, I remember, for example, the opening circle. I mean it wasn't like we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, just the night when everybody came, I guess I remembered other circles I had been a part of. And I think even in teaching sometimes I had used that model and noticed that that made a, a big difference. And of course Francis, mm -hmm. the priest, who's a friend of mine, I think I think there was some, a lot of validation mm -hmm. about having a circle. Mm -hmm. and. That has made a tremendous, but you know, I think what it is, is that the reason why these things came to place is it was organic. We, we, the, the feeling that we started with was that it wasn't, we knew it wasn't hierarchical. We never thought that way. We never thought people would be lined up in chairs facing the front with somebody mm -hmm. presenting an idea to them. Mm -hmm. it, it, it never occurred to us. Mm -hmm. And so the, the forms just followed that. And I but did you get a space immediately, like a rental space for the office or something? Oh no! No, no that was, that was <laughs> really from, from your all of from our home. all of our papers were in Cornelius's uh, apartment for several years, <laughs> and he has a small apartment. But um, yeah, we we didn't have an office until what two thousand five years ago? Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe two thousand two thousand one. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and. It, it, it has been so, but one of the other things we decided that's been very meaningful, in the first year, and again, I think Cornelius said something uh, to me about, or Sarah, I've forgotten, about having fellows come back for three right. years. Right, things, when one of our programs is a workshop in New York City, and we teach two per year, <clears throat> sometimes, um, fellows teach them and sometimes other individuals, other poets. But this year we had um, three poets get into the retreat that came yes. up from the workshop experience. Right. And that was really exciting to see it because is first it's very competitive. It, we wish it weren't because, you know, more and more the we demand is growing and we still don't have capacity to, you know, run five retreats. We're running one retreat. but. I mean, it was very, very exciting and encouraging to see that these poets had, you know, continued to develop and and uh, came out of that, applied for it, and got in. So we're hoping over time that as our programs build and as our fellows build these programs across the country, these opportunities are going to actually expand. One thing that Kavi kind of changes is in my generation, I couldn't have a conversation with 50 African-American poets. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear their opinions about what was going on in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't be in, in, in contact no. as many. No. Mm -hmm. Because one thing, there were African-American poets where I grew up in Detroit. I mean, I, I had no idea. I was going to be an African American <laughs> poet. I was going to be a teacher or a doctor or, you know, because you just didn't become a poet. Nobody became a poet, you know. Um, and there were some artists in Detroit, but um, it was, it, it felt like it was um, a very different kind of thing than I was writing. I was writing personal poetry about my family and the people in the black arts movement at that time um, were writing political poetry and and yet when I studied the white poets in graduate school you know something was missing there there, there was sort of not a place mm -hmm. where I really fit as a poet mm -hmm. so I was sort of questioning maybe I'm not a real poet you know because I don't fit this place or that place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I didn't really think I was going to be a poet until I came to New York. And it, because growing up in Detroit in a middle class black family, a lot of it was about the economics of 
get a job. 